Hello everybody, Ginger Giant here, and I'm back with another episode of the Game Prowl. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Assault Android Cactus, the top-down twin-stick shooter that swept the nation. And I was busy in the darkest reaches of my room doing college homework. Blah blah. But either way, we're back, we're here, we're doing this video. Now, if you recall, I did do a video on this in the past, the long, long, distant past some of you may not recall, because you weren't even there at the time, that video is so old now. But yeah, this game was an early access, back when I played it, it only had like the first two worlds and a couple other levels here and there, and that was really about it. Still a super fun game, I could still recommend it, but it's only gone up since then, and now here it is in full release, with, as you hopefully expect, a full complement of levels, all five worlds ready and rearing to go, as well as a few extra game modes and some crazy new mutators that we will definitely be playing with at the end of this video. Uh, but for now, let's get into the nitty gritty of the gameplay. So, since then they have added the Infinity Drive, which is the non-stop survival mode, thankfully, so you can chop till you drop effectively, or just blast till you drop, but that really doesn't have the same ring, so screw that. They added in a daily drive as well, which is a bit like the Isaac and the Spelunky daily. Everybody gets the same enemy spawn seeds, and you try and get as high a score as possible by the time the round ends. It's quite a bit longer than the normal missions in the game, but it does end unlike the Infinity Drive, so don't get those names mixed up like I did. And then of course there's the boss rush added, as is the case with a, a lot of these combat oriented games. Can't blame them, they tend to be pretty fun. Unfortunately, I'm awful at the boss fights in this game, so I haven't actually touched the mode yet. Uh, let's jump into the campaign though, because that's where all the main levels are. You got your full complement of shooty shooty bang bang people, all of which have their uh, their own unique weapons as you can see on the bottom there. You got uh, Aubergine, who's got like a helicopter instead of a gun, so I guess not everyone's shooty shooty bang bang in that respect. But yeah, everyone's got their own play styles, their own weapons, it's, it's very unique. You, there's probably an android here with your play style. And if you know my play style, you know I like to get up in people's face and drill their, drill their freaking bodies off, so of course I gotta roll with Peanut. Right. And uh, well, here's our new world map. Again, if you'll recall from the old uh, from the old game, we uh, it was literally just like a level select. There were these tiny little cylindrical pill-shaped things that you selected and they took you to your level. Now we got a full-on like holographic image of the ship, it's great! Like, legitimately great, I love this world map. Uh, either way, let's get into the stage and show off the actual gameplay. So on the top left there, you'll see a HUD that you'll quickly forget even exists. That's your health, and if I kill an enemy here, and they drop their, uh... I still say that those look like paper scraps from the office. Then you'll see a little white bar up here, that is your weapon level. And uh, of course, you have your primary weapon to fire, you press left trigger, you switch to your secondary weapon, and you go and kill everything, because this girl's secondary weapon is literally the best weapon in the game, as far as I'm concerned. Even better than the cannonball and the seeker missiles, I would dare argue that point to anyone. But uh, yeah, so basically those are the, the, the core essentials of the game. You move around, you melt people with your magma cannon, or shoot them with your bullets, or cut them up with your helicopter drone buddy, and you try and score as many points as possible without getting horribly murdered, like I almost did in the middle of that awful, awful, painful clusterfuck. Uh, of course, there are a few other things, like, you know, if you do end up dying, you don't actually die, you just kinda, your, your chain gets broken, and you have to revive, but... It takes time out of your uh, your precious, precious battery, which you can see up there on the top. That's your battery! That is literally your entire- can I kill this guy? Oh shit. Okay, I can't, just not with the secondary. But yeah, that is, up there is your entire life force. It depletes over time, and as kill enemies, you'll see batteries, like the one I just grabbed. And of course, you know, you grab a battery, it refills your battery. You're powered by Energizer or something like that, I can only presume. Hello, big guy! If you, if you wanted me to just land on top of you, all you had to do is say, just drill right into you, it'll be great. No one take that out of context, please, that would be legitimately the worst. Of course, should be know, there are also these power-ups that you see me getting. That one I just grabbed was shut down, which, well, shuts down everyone on the map. There are other ones, like speed boost, which I personally find to be the least useful. This one, speeds you up, causes all the power-ups to come toward you, and it's all great. And there's firepower, which gives you some extra drones. I don't recall if I got that one this recording or not. Did I at least get an A? I at least got an A. I'll take it. Yeah, depending on how many scores you get and how good of a chain bonus you get, it'll increase your rank. And, uh, well, your rank is... It, it, let's be honest, the rank is mostly a completionist thing here. Because, as you can see here, 
in over the uh, the thumbnail of the map, you can see it keeps track of all of your individual androids as well as the ranks you've achieved with each individual android. So there's a little something for you completionist folks out there. Play the game with every android, and life's pretty great. Let's uh, and what well, fuck? Let, let's do another stage in another world here. We'll do uh, nah, I've already S plus hive. Let's do influx. Actually, wait, was this one I wanted to do? Yeah, this is one of the ones I wanted to do. Here's another cool thing about this game, is it comes with a whole bunch of, like, dynamically changing levels, and it's just absolutely great. There, There's one stage where you're literally riding a train, and you have to sort of, like, roll with the, uh, the various forces pushing on you as the train pushes you around. Hazards go by that I have to avoid. There's another stage that literally just goes on ad infinitum. Oh, I just got shot. But yeah, and the but the the whole stage builds around you, so it's 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 very cool. There's a very wide variety of maps in this game, all of which are just absolutely excellent. There's of course also your boss fights, which are fairly unique themselves. The the bosses go in like a wave by wave formation. Every uh, every wave of the boss, so to speak, you defeat, you get a new battery, and uh, of course they go power. They grow more powerful and use more attacks each wave. We'll hopefully show off a uh, a boss very soon. Meanwhile, I'll just be murdering bees with a flamethrower, because that's the kind of dragon I am. DEAL WITH IT! That drill is so much fun to use. And again, there's only one character. If you don't want to drill alien robots, then, I mean, you don't have to. There's flamethrower robots, there's a robot with a sword that's super fun as well, but also super dangerous, because, you know. So, bringing a sword to a gunfight, ow, mine, is, uh, has never really been a particular I'm going in! And I just kind of went right past the, uh, the boss fight. Let me grab that battery. I'm trying to think if there's anything I haven't talked about yet, but I don't think so. I think we've covered really just about everything. Which means, I say it's about time to play with some of the mutators, I dare say. Hello! This is not a fun position! There are missiles raining down, there are guys everywhere! This is a very, very, very unpleasant day for, for, for good old Peanut here. Go! Oh, I don't know why, it's just... Something about it, in every game I've played, I just love charging headlong into battle, slamming into someone full speed. I'm basically a Krogan from Mass Effect is what I've garnered from all of my play, from the things I enjoy from all of my other gameplays. Did that last, the, the last enemy just knocked me down. Oh no, so good. The last non-turret enemy just knocked me flat on my bum. Now I have to do just the flamethrower of shame over there on that turret. How just... How disappointing. I can do better than that, come on. But yeah, there's basically the, the, the core gameplay for you. Kill enemies, try and chain them as much as possible, don't die, because that'll break your chain and everything goes horribly wrong. And uh, there's that. But let me show off some of the uh, the mutations here, because those are fun. If you go under collections, as I'm sure you may have noticed before, we were earning credits at the end of each stage. And uh, you can use those credits to buy say, uh, codex entries, so if I wanted to know about robots, I could buy and learn about robots. Or, uh, you know, there's also some, some gallop, some art stuff in here. I haven't actually looked at too much. But there you go, you can buy it, you can display it. There you go. But the big thing that you can spend money on is these extra options. These are the mutators. You can do things like give you a classic camera, you can add AI partners, you can make the enemies spawn as though you had AI partners, even though you don't. You can allow players to play with all the same character if you're doing local multiplayer. By the way, multiplayer in this game is only local, unfortunately. But yeah, all sorts of mutators here. So, uh, you know, you got color scheme effects. Psychedelic is really weird and I'm not gonna play with that one on because that's just weird. Mega weapons completely change what your character's secondary weapon is. So, for example, if I was playing with Pina with mega weapons on, she basically gets a magma tidal wave, which is really fun to play with. But here's the one I want to show off. Because this one's first person mode. This one's really neat. This one's very fun to play with. As the name implies, it lets you play the game in first person. Which is, uh, it's an experience, that's for certain. I could, I could see, like, a challenge let's play happening on someone's channel or Twitch stream of them trying to play through the entire game in first person. Let's play a Shiitake for this one. Okay. Even though Shiitake, I love her, she's a really fun character, but damn am I awful with her. But you know, with first person, it's a bit easier to, to line up the shots. Shiitake is a precision character in a uh, twin-stick shooter, so that's pretty weird. But, you know, that's the way it is. 
Let's go to, uh, let's go to Pillman. I haven't actually done this one in first person yet. Oh, it's Shiitake. We're probably gonna get wrecked. I probably should've warned you about that, by the way. Every action from the get-go is in first person. With this, uh, with this game mode. But, uh, this is... It's very much that whole, like, new perspective thing. It's very neat! Oh god, it's not very neat when literally spiders are climbing all over you. Holy shit, let's get some, uh, let's get some mines going here. This is unpleasant. Oh, sniper flipped across the map! Hell yeah! Oh, actually, I, I think they just walked on top of one of the mines that I laid. Oh, hi, big guy. <laughs> Unfortunately, this mode does not add things like headshots, as you've seen the- OW! That kinda hurt. I think it, I think a mine managed to curve its way around me. Oh, either that or I just kinda walked into the face of the turret. Or the bolts of the turret. <laughs> Again, it's very tricky. This game was clearly not designed as a first-person shooter. But it's still kind of fun. It's it's nice to have it as an extra, is what I'll say. Very fun to play with. I, I really wanted to show it off. Quite... Quite entertaining. Again, it's also quite terrifying, because there's no way to look behind you. So sometimes you just kind of get thwacked like that! Ow. Of course, it doesn't help that I'm also playing with the, the sniper of the game. That... That also tends to make the game quite difficult. Hey, big guy! Just gonna lay on top of me, huh? Alright, alright, I see how it is. Whoa! Meanwhile, I guess I'll just take my revenge by walking into your friend. Why not? What could possibly go wrong? Shooting those guys is really hard. I just naturally want to aim up. Even though I know that they take the same damage from all sides. And I know that there's literally no advantage to, uh, oh shit, I'm about to die. <laughs> battery! Battery, come! Thank you. Let's just throw down some mines. Oh, I didn't even realize I had firepower. Whoops. There's our drones over there. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy! There is a lot of things going on on screen right now. None of them am I okay with. At all. Somehow I managed to survive that, though. If I come out of this with, what was it, like two deaths? I'm fucking, that's fucking impressive. I'll take it. Yeah! Thank you. No, thank you, Shitake. Really fun character. I like her, but damn, is she hard to play with. I'm only accurate in first-person mode, but it, it's hard to actually, like, do anything survival-related in first-person mode. Incredibly difficult, in fact. Uh, let's show off one of the bosses as well before I end this video off, because those are still, again, they're pretty unique. You should check them out. And definitely one of the core parts of the game. We'll play as, uh, Spice Holly. Holly's one of my more favorites when it comes to boss killing. We'll do, uh... Did I do Vespila during my old video on this? I don't know if I did or not. Either way, we're gonna do it again, because she's a fun fight. I enjoy her a bit more than Embryo, and she's a bit more unique. I forgot to turn off first person mode! Oh god! That is infinitely more intimidating than her traditional entry. Oh boy. Well, I guess we're doing this in first person then, aren't we? There's always some dialogue between you and the uh, the boss before it. All these uh, all these androids have their own little backstory, their own lore, as you no doubt saw in the uh, the codex entries. So if you do want to, or rather, if you are interested in that sort of thing, every single boss also has their own dialogue with each individual android, and like depending on how their relation to the ship is, or the ship the ship master, as uh, some of these are called, they it affects you know the different dialogue choices they get. Oh my God, I'm inside of her. You know, as odd as it is, this may have actually been the best boss to, uh, to pick for first person mode. I actually, I take that all back. Holy shit, those, uh, those flowers were literally paper thin. Oh man, I'm getting wrecked. Give me the battery. Oh no, that was the battery from last round. I forgot to grab it because I didn't even see it. Oh, that's bad. I'm like super behind in battery life now. Oh, that's another bad thing about first person mode. You can't actually see the heat level on your secondary weapon, which makes life very difficult. To say the least. Uh, I don't like where I am right now. Let's just switch to our secondary, abuse the iframes, and get eaten by the wasps. And probably horribly die. This was God, this was a mistake. Oh my god, I need to kill them now! Oh let's turn off first person mode, shall we? I say we shall. As I said, it makes the game a lot more difficult. A lot more intimidating and cool, but a lot more difficult. Okay. Dick do on that one. Let's play as uh let's continue to go as Should we do Lemon actually? Yeah, let's do Lemon. She's fun too. She's probably my favorite of the default androids. Hey, check it out, I'm not in first person this time. 
Uh, infinitely better. Now this time, I'm gonna go, go ahead and kick your butt, alright? Even though you and Lemon are like best friends, it's necessary. You've been hacked and stuff. There is, I mean, there is actually a fairly interesting story to this game. A lot more interesting than a lot of uh, top-down shooters, though. Again, these are top-down shooters, so... A lot of good that that says, huh? No, I just wanted to shut down! Why'd you have to be like that? No, I will touch you so much! I really want that battery before I kill her. Give me the battery! I'm actually impressed that I managed to get her out of this form before depleting the battery. Man, I botched that boss fight in first person so hard. I really wish there's some sort of, like, radar or something. I, again, I realize this isn't a first-person shooter, and that is literally just an extra option for sillies and giggles, but... Man. Some part of me really wishes there was a bit more support for it, because it's really fun to play with. In my opinion, of course. I don't know, something about being on the same level as the person you're killing. I realize that sounds awful and tribal, and just purest violent, but... I mean, I'm a dragon. What are you expecting, honestly? You're, you're gonna be a serious nuisance. If you're freaking vines and stuff. So, as you can see, the uh, she is changing up her AI every time. Like, now her swarm is going to start reaching out in droves to try to get to me. Would you mind giving me the battery? Please? Oh! Bollocks. I was hoping I'd be able to get out fast enough using the, uh, the speed pickup. Alas, I was heinously incorrect. There is a pickup up there. I'm gonna wait for it to cycle over into uh, shutdown. I don't know. How wow, that worked really well, actually. Now we shut down this one, and we should have some missiles up above. Ye mine the flowers. <laughs> Meanwhile, simultaneously walking into the thorn bushes. And there you go. That's a standard boss fight. You go wave by wave. You get a battery. All of the boss fights definitely get a lot more difficult and very, very cool later in the game as well, but, you know. That's just boss number two of five. Technically six, but five. But other than that, I believe that is basically it. That is Assault Android Cactus, a very neat game, very fun, very entertaining for all you score attack folks. Again, one thing to bear in mind is I did basically manage to beat the entire game over the course of, uh, what is it, Naturally. over the course of, I, I want to say, like, fucking five, six hours? It's hard to tell, because I did put a lot of time into this game in early access, so it's hard to actually tell the, uh, what time, my total time, but again, but I'm rambling. I'm fucking rambling. Stop it, Ginger. You're so far into the video, don't ruin it now. The, uh, what's it called? But yeah, for people who just kind of play a game to complete it, is what I'm trying to say. You might want to wait for a Steam sale. It's still great, and I still recommend picking it up, but you definitely won't get the the, the most out of the game. But if you like a, a good old-fashioned score attack, if you're some sort of completionist, if you're okay with playing the same mission over and over again to get actually at least a halfway decent score, then, uh, oh god, the fire's coming, oh god! Then I can highly recommend this game. It is, uh, quite fantastic, quite entertaining. I have to wrap this up with one final look out with my basically tied for favorite character here. Still torn. Simply because this character's alternate attack tends to get me killed quite a bit. You're not invulnerable when you're charging up your sword. It's quite tricky. Oh yeah. Yeah, once more. Great game overall. Definitely go uh, go check it out. Got a great soundtrack too, which you can pick up as DLC. I lost the S+. Plus. In case you did notice that, like, swinging at the top of the screen, that's basically a, uh, a special mode I have in it called Pro Mode. Where it basically lets me know when I done goofed up and wrecked my chance to get a, a perfect score on a level. That's basically, uh, that's all it is in its simplest form. Just, uh, just another way for this, uh, for this game to entice you. Because again, if you are, like, super into score attacks and you, I am so dead. There's fire on one and shockwave on the other. That was a bad day. Your slice. Eh, let's not play with the fire, actually. Fuck, I completely lost my train of thought. This is what happens when I get hit with the horrible shockwaves and instantly fried. Everything just kind of goes downhill. Uh, you can't. I, I would go for that, but you can't shut down the the incinerator as much as I may wish you could. Go boom. 
yeah, that's basically my final thoughts on the game as I hide in a c c little cubby hole and hope to god I don't get horribly shot and murdered. Oh god, what happened? I tried to like switch to my sword, but it didn't quite switch properly. Which was quite unfortunate. Give me the shutdown! I can use that right now! Oh, let's chain- no, let's not chain the shutdown actually. Let's just- let's just go up and stab him in the butt! That's one of my more favorite tactics. Where's the last enemy? It's a wasp. It's always a wasp as the last enemy. Yeah. So, with that, I guess we're basically gonna call this one here. So be sure to like it if you liked it, subscribe for more, and uh, I will see you guys next time. Oh, also, link to the games down in the description. 15 bucks! Once more, highly recommend. For everybody. Everybody.